Just for cooking. But there's no one who cooks better than him. You know, it's very fitting that the, this song is the one that you two randomly decided to start playing next. <laughs> so I will say, I did a lot of work too for this, because I ported a charm over from 2nd edition uh, to 3rd edition just to be able to use it for one of the characters I made. Because it's probably my all-time favorite charm in the entire game. Just as long as it's not the friendship theme. Um, it is a second edition abyssal performance charm. Ah. Uh. It is my favorite charm in the entire game. 
and I absolutely love using it whenever I played an Abbey back in second edition. Now I know nobody likes a loot box economy, but I think we can all agree on a community chest. Uh, Sirio, I doubt it's so much a matter of it's overpowered as trying to convert things from second edition to third edition is difficult. Yeah, I had to work real, really hard on it to try to figure out exactly how it works to make sure it works within the rules of third edition. Um, I think I came up with a decent way of doing it. Um, so I'm kind of proud of my 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 charm but it wasn't easy i'm really curious to see i really hope i get to use him because i think you guys will love him even then uh i'm not saying it's overpowered and it overpowered more than other charms but some charms are just insane I mean, yeah, one of the uh, dragon blood charms for archery, if you want to share that. Uh, <laughs> the tree. Uh, the dragon bloods have a charm. It's one of their capstone charms that they can use, where the dragon blood in question will take their bow, shove it into the ground, and a giant tree will sprout under it. A giant tree that you can basically perform martial arts on and fight multiple enemies on, jumping from branch to branch. But while you are on the tree, you are able to fire basically arrows from the tree branches at any enemy who is attacking one of your allies in a counterattack to block them, or you can launch full-scale waves of arrows down on enemies. And the charm lasts for as long as you are on the tree. So someone has to get to you and knock you off the tree in order to end the charm prematurely. Which leads to some very glorious, epic awesomeness, because they can still fire at you from the tree, so while you are on it, you are on their territory, and it's great. And then there's charms that let you bend or change reality, charms that let you stop that, charms that let you devour gods, charms that let you slap the sickness out of someone. And then take the sickness, turn it into a god, and then force the god to work for you to make other people sick. And then there's a list of charms where you just tell people do stuff and they get stronger over time. Which is, like, it's very powerful charms, but in worldwise it takes so long. Because you need to train them for uh, so many months or years or whatever. <laughs> but it's really good because you can get the experience back and that counts as new experience that you got oh god so it's a really really good way if you want to just spam experience literally spending your experience training them and then getting it back and then it counts as getting more experience which you can then spend but it also counts towards your totals so you can level up your essence extremely quickly and you can use it on your party members All things considered, I don't think this charm is broken. I designed it more for stunting opportunities because that's always what the charm was there for in second edition, was to be used for stunting. And it's really, really fun when you use it right. It requires a lot of ingenuity and a lot of imagination to be able to use the charm. Because it doesn't just do something, it sets things up.
All right, hello all you lovely peoples out there, and welcome. I am Nervous King of Conquerors, and this is Tides of Madness Exalted. I will turn it over to our glorious storyteller, Timmy. Thank you, Nevis. So, right now we're just waiting for one player to get here. When we last left our intrepid players a long while ago, they had just conquered, well, conquered uh, the Fair Folk Domino and his army in a glorious battle of tea making. Yes, I'm not joking, for those of you who didn't see it. There was a glorious battle of tea making, and their dragon blood companion was able to make a tea so fine that they seduced the fair folk to work for them. It was kind of awesome. Not gonna lie. And now they are off, heading into the wild, the sea of chaos and sandy and madness, where the fair folk live. What's up? Donation goal has been completed. Thank you yet again, <laughs> Toshime. Uh, <laughs> Toshime. Thank you. Thank you, Toshime. <laughs> oh, what glorious, glorious. Okay, I get to have fun with you guys. Here we go. Don't worry, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. You guys have been heading into towards the wild. It's been a somewhat slow journey, but it's been fairly easy for you guys. You guys are currently heading towards uh, where one of the elders of the Silver Pack is. What have you guys been up to over the last two weeks that you guys have been traveling? I would have simply been entertaining our soldiers and workers with my music in the hall every single day and night. Also, dear God, I just realized, Chiv, you're going to love this character even more now. It's going to be fucking great. <laughs> oh, I'm excited. Good, good. They, they very much appreciate the music, though. Very much appreciate it. It always helps to brighten their day. I also didn't mention this last time because they're not good for combat, but I do have a little group of musicians that follow me, and they would have been aiding me during the concert. I like it. I like it. Nervous! Oh, go ahead. Trying to get to know some, I'll, I'll be uh, getting to know some of the other uh, soldiers and um, and other small folk, I suppose. Okay, yeah, no, they are, you are more than welcome here among them. They would happily talk with you, get to know you, introduce themselves. They're, for the most part, mostly the soldiers are very well trained, and they show no fear at all that, of what you are. Oh, and even the, even the normal people, like just the workers, are very comfortable with you, which usually most people would be running screaming into the night. Yeah, I'm kind of tempted to tell them tales of my uh, my time with the guild, but I'm not, not too sure that how that would be uh, that would be uh, as my character or not. <laughs> I, I'm kind of ashamed of my, uh, my past in that respect. So. Understandable. <laughs> yeah, no, um, the guild is very well known throughout all of creation. Basically, they are the Walmart of creation. Except that they also sell slaves. If you want it, they have it. Yep, it's just a matter of paying their price. Um, one of the things you would know, then, is they have a very lucrative trade deal with the Fair Folk, actually. They will trade uh, human slaves to the Fair Folk. The Fair Folk will eat their souls and then give back the brainless husks to them to be sold as uh, mindless slaves. That's, um, that's, that's not good. It's a very big profit for them. So they do it a lot in all four directions. I, I think that might go against my, uh, my character a little bit. <laughs> Uh, 
Perhaps that's why you love them. I like it. I like it. And you, Nevis, King of Conquerors? Uh, he will he will be spending his time uh, training with his troops, uh, trading up uh, skills for battle and such. Generally, just getting things ready to, uh, for the upcoming battle. Okay. What about what are you doing with no name? No name, he will also be, he, he kind of looks at no name as an especially uh, unique soldier from his army. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, all of his, all of his soldiers are very important to him. Uh, but no name is someone that he takes a very special interest in, uh, training with them in particular. Uh, he will be doing a few one-on-one -on -one spars with the, uh, uh, with the kid, uh, and he will also be doing, uh, making sure to, uh, explain the different, uh, casts for the Lunars to him, so he can figure out which one to get the tattoos for. And you also have help from Wint. From who? Uh, your solar partner. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Gilgamesh. <laughs> he would have happily helped you as well. Nevis would let him handle the army in general. Uh, when he, when Nevis is focused on, uh, uh, no name. Well, we had the Tanya for a moment, and then she popped back out. She mentioned she would try to be on her phone if it was going to take her too long for shopping, so it might be that. Welcome. Hello. Okay, this isn't on push to talk, is it? Nope, you're active right now. Yeah. I uh, let you know that I'm mostly at the checkout. I'm at the checkout. I'll be on my way home I'm eminently. So I'm only going to run in a few minutes late. Okay. It's important stocking up that we had to do. I mean, so far you're an hour late, so... Hey, it was the only window that I had to actually get a ride down to the store. I'm going as fast as I can. So, yeah. I'll... I've got like maybe half an hour more before I'll be ready. I could, in theory, join in on the car ride home. Alright. See you soon. Yep, see ya. And that was our time traveler from the 1990s. <laughs> We'll come back to her, I think, when uh, we're ready for that. Hey, what about our last uh, Intrepid Exalted? I've been worshipping at the different altars that are on this flying fortress and trying to figure out more about the spirit of my bow. Ooh, try and commune with the spirit of your bow. I like it. I like it. Can you describe your bow again to me? It's 
a short power bow, which has two main elements of it. It's where did I put that down? The main arm of it is the solar element. And then the actual string is what's that called? Sorry about this. You're good. Uh, it's the sidral element. Oh, uh, the uh, so it's made out of orichalcum and star metal. Yes. Uh, do I have to announce if I'm training uh, new charms? Um, basically, just to kind of let me know, but we're right now we're in downtime. You have plenty of time to get get your charms and everything. It's okay. Okay. I was gonna um, as I'm listening to everybody telling me, you know, talking to me and stuff. I'm going to be um, practicing judge's ear technique. Okay. Yeah, week. that's perfectly fine. Um. So, have you been able to figure out the name of your, um? your artifacts yet have you been not able yet to... it has not told you it yet so does your bow have any d special features to it like any special marks sigils symbols like the way it's made does it have like two great bird wings spreading out from the bow as you or anything like that anything special or unique for it the string seems to disappear as I pull the arrow back. Okay. You have not yet found out the name of it. However, you have begun seeing something when you are holding the bow sometimes. When you are trying to commune with it to learn about it, you have begun seeing a spectral figure sometimes around you almost like it's made out of starlight but you haven't been able to get a good look at it it's more been watching you like whenever you're sitting in a room you might see it like uh around the corner in a doorway kind of peeking and looking at you watching you it doesn't seem malicious or bad it seems more curiosity and interest in you no one else has been able, has ever said anything about seeing it. Only you are able to see it. Okay, and still give it its space. Yeah, you, you you can probably guess that this may be the spirit of the bow that you are seeing it is actually manifesting. Nice, or at least manifesting enough that you can see it. Cool. You, you can feel like you are getting close, that there's some power within the bow that's, like, at the tip of your fingers, but you just can't grasp. It'll still take a little bit of time to get used to it. Mm-hmm. And I will socket the hearthstone that I have inside the bow. Okay. Then I think we are ready to go on then for right now because, oh, we're going to have fun with that later, but not quite yet. Soon you will get it. Um, So we are two weeks into our journey, moving in, moving on. And as you guys are going, 
the great alarm of the fortress begins to go off. Uh, Nevis, you would know that this alarm only ever goes off if there is an actual threat to the fortress that has been sighted. Battle stations, everyone! We have a threat about! Do we have cannons? Not yet. I'm not sure the setup of this fortress, I'm not... Uh, otherwise, basically, Nevis is uh, barking out orders for, you know, defense and such. Mm-hmm. Uh, as the alarm interrupts my performance, instead of complaining, I am going to alter my music to work around the alarm and <laughs> it in the song. Should you be helping? I am helping. I am inspiring all to do better. I guess Varric's gonna run up to the control center, or at least to try to figure out what's going on if he's needed anywhere. Okay. Run to the edge to prepare an arrow in case. Okay. I feel that was a bad answer. kind of figuring my army my troops are also lining the various edges with bows and such i hope there's walls on the edges because if not that just does not seem safe there are but as you get to the edges and where do you go to nevis uh, he, as well as No Name, and the, uh, and, uh, I am terrible with names. Mark Tokyo. Oh, yeah, and oh, Paris. Paris. Uh, the four of them are, uh, kind of in the center a bit, unless we know where the threat is coming from. It's not in the fortress or on the fortress. It's be outside of the fortress with this particular alarm. Well, yes. Uh, I'm meaning, like, unless we know a direction that the threat is in. In which case, we'd be near the edge of the fortress on that side. Otherwise, we are more in the center to respond where needed. Do you go anywhere, Chim? I'm staying in the center around the uh, hall that I would be playing my music in. I'm not going to stop until the threat actually comes. And then I will probably just change what song I play. Okay. So, for those who went to the control room or the edge of the fortress, you can all see it. Either through the cameras that are set up within the uh, fortress itself that project outwards which is basically how you fly the thing, or just with your own naked eyes, you can see it. A vast swarm of darkness across the ground below you. It's so large. Nevis, do any of you, first, do any of you have awareness charms at all? I do. Okay. Um, uh, we don't. I guess it would be senses, but no. Yes. I don't. Okay. Um, so, give me a perception awareness roll for everyone who's at the edge who does not have any awareness charms. Just at the edge or in the control center, too? Control center two. Oh, okay. okay. Five awareness. Five perception, so ten, I guess. Hmm. Not 
much help there. That is a bot. Yay. I'm helping. Two successes. That was so many. Word of our community's acclaim spreads. We need to roll for museum. Uh, I'm not at the edge. Oh, oh sorry. Oh, control. Control. Yeah, the control room too. The control room is central, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It'd okay. be in the center. So it was perception, perception uh, alertness or awareness, whichever one it is here. Awareness. awareness. Okay. Apologies. One success for you. I don't know the stats for Martokio or uh, Ferris or no name, so. You made it, so don't worry about it. Okay. Okay. I will let them make it too, since you could just tell them as well. Uh, Varric, for you, it looks like just a rolling sea of darkness. Like a living thing. Is this some sort of like wild creature? But our other two, you two are able to see the small figures there. This is an army. All hands to battle stations. Unless Tommy is rolling. He is not here. Uh, what did we see? Tommy just got into the chat. I imagine Tanya's character walking up and trying to tell her constructs to work, and Nevis just pushing her <laughs> off the wall. <laughs> like, <laughs> all right, man. I am now in the car and on the way home. Yeah. There's so many options for leveling up and I am still trying to figure out what it what I want to Dude, yeah, yeah it's, it's all good. You can just save it too. Oh, I never finished filling out my feet. I still have that little uh, feet thing to do. Uh, you broke out really bad, and I we did not catch that. I uh, did not finish her sheet. There's just one major thing she had to do, but it's fine. More so with this session. So. You guys can see the figures there. I have my feet or I'm still not picking you up, unfortunately. I believe that was... Uh, something wasn't ready. I believe it was what the charms would be for Lunars. Uh, yeah, arms. Hopefully. That was saying, yeah, charms or whatever they are. I I can speak jumbled mess. Don't worry. Impressive. How much time do I still have? Even begin. Uh, someone did a donation. I believe it was Toshime. So uh, we're fighting a thing. The main story is not progressing because of it. 
Actually, this is going to be part of the okay. main story now. Yeah, don't mind me, I'm just currently unavailable for the beginning of the fight because I have... There are so many undead creatures here. You can see them. Skeleton, skeletons in armor. Things that look like torsos chained together. Torso after torso after torso. Moving on their arms like centipedes with blades attached to them. Other creatures that look like more body parts stitched together than anything. And then one giant creature that actually has what looks like a massive tent built onto its back as it's lumbering along. This army looks bigger than yours, Nevis. Maybe twice, almost three times as big. My army is so well trained, they can take on this army. Quantity versus quality. They're made of patchwork. It looks like they'll fall. They'll look like they fall apart at the stiff breeze. The equipment that they are geared with looks like custom work, like very, very high quality. And it looks like. Somebody hmm? took the time to put a very high-end gear on... Oh, real quick. What was the name of my solar? Wind. W-I-N-T? Wind. W-I-N-D. Oh. oh. Wind. Wind Cut Diamond is his full name. Okay. I was about to ask if they were my secret brother, because my last name is Wind. <laughs> I'm guessing it would be a major intimacy? Probably, Probably yeah. I wanted to actually write it down on my sheet because I am terrible at remembering names. <laughs> Um, so it's custom worked armor, uh, but they are on the ground and we're in the air. Yes, but it looks like they have surrounded an entire village. The army is large enough that it is completely surrounded this village. The only reason you can even see is because it's the only place that doesn't have the undead in it yet. But it looks like they haven't tried to do anything yet. Pull in in the drive now, 10 minutes to unload the car, and then I'll be able to actually join it. Did we want to help out this town? Yes, uh, it would be best to help them out. Perfect! Nothing happens. Damn. Nice, nice try, though. I was gonna have him summon a wall of salt around the town. Nice try, though. Damn it, Domino! Very well. Troops, prepare for descent. Your soldiers are moving like a well oiled machine as they get to the drop pods. The little drop ships, I should say. Uh, Nevis and company will be on the first one to go. And, uh, he will have a selection of troops that are coming with him. Um, the rest will follow, but he is going to go down first. And he basically always brings, you know, 
He gives each part of the uh, army a... Every soldier gets their chance as part of the vanguard, you know? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Head into a drop pod, too, I suppose. I still think there's a shadow down there. I don't know, I don't know what the heck's going on. Oh, right. The village down there is surrounded by undead. We must go assist. Oh, yes, by all means. Let's do that. Yep, time to get into the drop pods. You guys are launching into the village? Yep. I would be heading down as well. Okay. Uh, to the edge of the village. Um, we don't exactly want to be inside the village. Like, not in the middle, but... Uh, the rest of the army will probably come down to the middle, but... Uh, Nevis will be going to the edge. As you guys uh, make... Uh, God, I wanted to say Planet Fall. As you guys reach and land in the village... You can see maybe 50 feet away, the undead are there, standing in perfectly straight uh, rows of soldiers. These ones look to be equipped with uh, large shields and spears. Basically, it's a full shield wall. And you can probably guess this goes completely around the village. And they are zombies, it looks like, now that you can see them up close. With a mix of also some more skeletal creatures as well. Um, give me one moment. I need to check one of... Where the hell did the PDF go? There it is. I need to check some of my charms again. Because I have an idea. Depending on how fast I can use this. Um, okay, so basically, I am thinking of setting up, I'm trying to find the charm here. Do I actually have the prior one? There it is. Okay, so I am going to do, it looks like I can do this uh, fairly quickly, but I'm going to, like, it says basically instantly, and if I want to do this tiny little area, I just have to run through the village to mark it as my territory. 
Uh, you need to be acknowledged as the top predator here by the people in the village. I mean, it just says I, they have to accept my presence. I, it doesn't say I have to be recognized as top, necessarily, but... They don't know you're there, though, yet. I know. I know. Uh, but yes. When landing, I will be, uh, immediately going to the town and... Or, finding whoever I can for the leader of the town. Uh, we're getting down there ASAP to, you know, be, uh, you understand, I think. Yes. <laughs> yes. All right. All right. I'm, uh, like 90% here now. I am home. Uh, can I get a quick recap? So, a bunch of undead. There's a whole bunch of undead around the village that we saved before. Different village. Different village. There's always a village in danger. Have these villagers ever considered just, you know, not living in constant existential threats? Just, you know, choose not to. Say no. But if you live, then you're always in a constant threat of dying, be it from medical issues or ex ex outside forces. And most people can't afford to move to the center island. They're commoners. They're not allowed to. Not unless they're absolute, they're surveying the dragon bloods or giving them what they need. Remember, if a fair folk wants to suck out your soul, just tell them no. They can't legally take it by force. <laughs> that's that's horrible. Actually, I, I'm not sure if that's true in Exalted, but uh, in some lore, fair folks, when in other fair folk houses, cannot do that unless there's ill manners and such. <laughs> Can. They can. But as you go deeper into the town, um, you guys can see you guys have a shadow on the roofs following you. We have a shadow following us. Mm-hmm. Ah, that's ominous. Nevis will turn around his spear at the ready. Who is it in the shadows? Reveal yourself to Nevis, King of Conquerors. The figure bounds off of the rooftop. Flipping three, four, five times in the air before making a very showy landing and throwing his arms up. Um, Jim, to you, that was probably the most showy landing you have ever seen in your entire life. And he did it perfectly. Well, I must do better when I start my performance. Um, oh, much better than no name. Right. <laughs> he and yet and no yet. name's failure is why he wound up being rescued instead of killed. It's a very well, it's a very good landing, but I wouldn't say that it's perfect. <laughs> I'm resisting. <laughs> I already tried to summon Domino to have him create a wall of salt around the town just to, you know, give us some defenses here. He's busy with his last mission. It's just him. not the perfect opportunity yet for him to appear. He's still plotting a perfect wedding in another world. But it really would be perfect if he were to show up right now and make one of his perfect walls. I'm just picturing him frantically sending these to voicemail right now. 
<laughs> you know how people say you uh, feel, I think it's a shiver when someone, um, and, no, you sneeze when you mention your name? Domino is just <laughs> sneezing constantly at this point. Which you perfectly sick. After the fifteenth <laughs> one, he's just you people are a perfect irritant. Uh, but this figure looks to be dressed in a simple black cotton shirt and shorts. He has little shoes. Um then he looks to be about five or six, maybe. His skin, though, is perfectly porcelain white. Um, so I have a problem. My character sheet, um, remember how my computer blew up? Mm -hmm. I don't have my character sheet. Uh, did you send a copy to Timmy like you were going to, or not yet? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was, I was sending you guys regular backups anytime I made an edit. Just, it's, I have no idea where my backups would be, and I don't have any locally on this computer. At least I don't think I do. If you sent it to Timmy, then it would be on Discord. Uh. Yeah, I have a character sheet on mine sent from uh, 12 1. Keep in mind, you guys can put, you can customize your little character sheets here on uh, Fantasy Grounds. Like the main, it's not the most i mean it's a bit of work to set up but basically like you can click the little uh slash icon uh on the main tab and then click the plus icon and just type in your stats so like i can type in you guys can see it on the stream like i've got two dots in strength so i Strength dash two. Dexterity dash five. So on and so forth. In fact, I'm going to do that for all my main attributes. So the game kept getting put off and put off and put off, and it's been so long, I forgot where I was keeping all my sheets and stuff at. Well, uh, like we said, there's the one in your PMs with Timmy that you can at least build off of. And you can also store yeah. this stuff on the, uh, on Fantasy Grounds. What if I have a different, um version because that can actually have a, I actually have a box next to it. here's hoping the one that I sent to him is the most updated version not like I have any alternatives anyways they actually have quite a bit of stuff that you can add to this as well uh, what do you mean by a different version Nestle well no I, I think I found it when you added underneath the like um Underneath abilities, like I have abilities, attributes, intimacies, and merits, and then I have actual numbers next to each one. Like those are categories, essentially. When you edit the list there, on the main. Uh, I have not used this version of fan or this uh, rule set on Fantasy Grounds. It's their basic one. Ah. So I'm not familiar with everything that can be done with it yet. Gotcha. It was on the main the main tab. Uh, if you edit it, then you can add like each one that you listed. There was a category essentially. Yeah, I was seeing category. that, and that actually I was thinking because it's physical, social, and mental for attributes. To me. True. 
for all of them. Uh, phys like strength, dexterity, stamina, they're considered physical. Then the second column is social, and then the third is mental. Yep. Okay. So yeah, you can go in here, do that instead. I found my sheet. Cool. Yay. And it and yeah, the one that was in PM was an outdated version. But when I was trying to open it up, I actually found that I do have the updated version on this computer. I have no idea where or when or how it ended up on this computer. I, I'm fairly certain we started playing this game after your uh, computer blew up. I think we started like setting it up beforehand, but our first or second session was after it. Uh, guys, go ahead and do what I've done here. You can see on the uh, stream what I'm doing here. Uh, that way I can also... Uh, Timmy can take a look if he needs to. It's more work to set this stuff up, but once it's actually set up, it's easy to update. And it'll make it easy if, T if Timmy needs to see something on our sheets. And it's a nice little backup just in case. I can start doing that on the side. Welcome to resume whenever. Who are you? I have identified myself. At least do the courtesy of the same. An earnest disciple. No, I was thinking real quick. Okay. The boy gives a very showy bow to all of you. I am the shadow that slays imagination and dreams. Nice to meet you, everyone. Another ostentatious title. Uh, you, you want to run that by me again? I am the slayer of imagination and dreams. Nice to meet you, everyone. And what brings you here? My dad. My dad. As he literally poked his finger back towards the giant abomination with the tent on its back. Lovely father there. Yeah, he is. I can't imagine what your mother must have seen in him. Um, they loved each other very much until barbarians came into our town and killed everybody. Were those barbarians from this town? No. Far north. Alright, and are you the leader of these undead, or...? Dad, Dad as he points the finger back over. He's the, He's the one who made them. So... What you all doing here? Making a Shadowland? Wait, what? Making a Shadowland? Those are the, uh... Uh, refresh us on that? I, I, my brain is not quite processing. This is a common knowledge thing that you guys would know. Shadowlands are areas where the underworld and creation touch. At night, when you go into a Shadowland, 
the dead can manifest as living things, or at least as close to living as they can. They are physical beings. Ghosts are normally insubstantial and can't really interact without using essence. They are as real as you and I are in a Shadowland at night. And if you try to leave a Shadowland at night, you go out into the underworld instead of creation. Unless you're one of the Exalted. The Exalted can still go through. We have the multi-pass. Dallas multi-pass. In this case, for a Shadowland linking creation basically allows the dead to come and go as they please. These sheets are proving to be an absolute pain to reconfigure and edit. I have very little idea what I'm doing here. <laughs> Fantasy grounds? Yeah, the, the 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 sheet format is awkward. I mean, it's meant to be generic enough that you can that you can make it work. It's not perfect because it's not uh, specifically tailored to the system, but it is generic enough that you can <laughs> fill it out. Be right back, bathroom. I don't think I'm going to use the abilities tab, though, because I don't like the setup on that one. I think I'm just going to do all on the main tab. How I have it is I have three more things in the main tab saying War, Wisdom, and Life. Uh, I put a Z in front of Life just so it wasn't above my main stats. And then I only have the skills I have points in. And if it's a favored ability, I have in parentheses an F after the name. No, problem that I'm having right now is that I can't reorder any of the items on the list. And um, anytime that I try to like click and drag or anything like that, it just duplicates the items. And it keeps shoving stuff to the bottom um, of the list. You cannot... Uh, it's all alphabetical order, so you could do numbers if you want to reorder it in a particular way. That, okay, so if it's sorting alphabetically, that, that I can work with. Yeah. That's why I had the Z in front of life, so it was under mental, physical, and social. Question, are we looking at a juggernaut? Um, it is not juggernaut. However, it looks like it is a miniature, very, very weak version of juggernaut made from multiple, multiple bodies, if you can guess if you want to guess yeah. yeah this is only about the size of maybe like a second or third story building it's mostly like a humanoid shape moving on all fours would it be an occult role to see what it is uh yes intelligence occult right Yes. Those are D4s. Uh, um, two tens to reroll. Yep. Do I need to? <laughs> In case you get ones, or that. Oh! <laughs> you know it. Uh, favorite shoe size. What it likes to have for dinner. <laughs> this looks like it is a necromantic creation. It is basically serving as a sort of living fortress. Um, everyone knows about Juggernaut, who knows anything of supernatural lore. This looks like it is a very paltry, weak imitation of Juggernaut. 
It's far smaller, but also far faster. Basically, this is a living, walking fortress made of dead bodies stitched together and risen by necromant necromancy. To do this type of thing, to get something this big and this powerful, means likely whoever is in that castle, castle, aka tent, is probably an extremely powerful necromancer. So, I'm going to explain the basics of that to everyone and add on that its favorite steak is T-Bones, and it prefers to drink out of a crystal chalice. It's a very civilized wall of flesh. The, the funny thing is, though, it prefers to drink out of, like, a human-sized crystal chalice, so you need, like, a million of them. Uh, also, you, with that rule, you would also know that all these undead are mindless, which means they need to be ordered around to do something, but it seems they are still acting, which means there has to be some method of control that whoever raised them is using. Well, Either in artifact or some spell. My songs are useless. Good luck, everyone. I'm going to pat someone on the back. <laughs> Nonsense! You can still assist uh, our troops with inspiring music. Now, uh... Ugh, boy, I'm afraid we cannot allow that to happen. What? These people have lives. They have things they wish to do. It may not be glorious, but it is something that is worthy of protecting. Mm-hmm. And what about all creation? What about it? Uh, that's our job. We're supposed to set up, um, wipe out a lot of these frontier towns so that we have easy uh, access to them. So we can stop any invasions that are coming. You know, like the giant army that's coming. Quick question: How do you have two? How did you do the two-column thing on your sheet? I can't get mine to do it. Uh, as you add more, it just does it automatically. All right. I did not do that on purpose. It just did it automatically. I guess that means there's a dozen places around the front where this is happening. No, we're here more just going in order, place by place. And I'm afraid that these people's lives are not yours to determine. As important as it is to keep the fair folk at bay, can't just stand by and let you drive these people off of their own land oh no 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 we don't want to drive them off their own land we want to kill them as horrifically and uh, painfully as possible we have to make sure a shadowland forms here otherwise it's completely useless can you not just go around the villages no we need the villages because we need a way for our armies to be able to come out of the underworld could we make a shadow land without the murder? We need the murder. That's the most important part to make one. The more murder, well, the more you're not making more a shadow land. The bigger, gets, the bigger it gets, the bigger it is, the better it is for us. I think we've reached an impasse here.
Dad was very clear on this. <laughs> it's not like we're going to just waste everything. All these spare parts that we'd be able to use. The ghosts that we can use. The body parts. It's really it's not useful. a we're matter not of efficiency. I, I do kind of like their efficiency, though. Um, what if we helped you made one somewhere else? I mean, it's kind of important we have one here. At least that's what Dad told me. And he gets it from the big boss. Location wouldn't matter if they're going out of their way to torture the innocent in order to create it. We have to! It's the only way to make one! Who's the big boss? Um, Mask of Winners, if you know him. Ooh. Do we know him? Yes, he's the one who took over my hometown. Does your hometown still exist? You know how I was asking about Juggernaut? That's where it sits. I was worried about that. You have been terribly misguided, young one. And Nevis, King of Conquerors, does not rule over a kingdom of the dead. I mean, everything dies. We go to great lengths to make that take as long as possible. And no, I don't mean through extended torture. Well, I mean, you have like maybe 60, 70 years alive, and then you have an eternity dead. I mean kind of know where you stand on that and they deserve every single day of that 70 years well i mean there's plenty to do in the underworld and I mean, they will get to that deal enslaved they'll get to that after they've had their allotted 70. it's not up to you to decide how much of their time in the living world gets cut short. Sure it is. And they're still, with creation, reincarnation, not just death. Yeah, but we kind of make sure that doesn't happen, so don't worry about it, though. We're very efficient. Every little part will be used. Nothing will be wasted. It's all for the good of creation. Or you just acknowledged so reincarnation. Reincarnation equals infinity. Which means that it isn't a finite amount of life that you're stealing. And it is theft. Don't call it anything that it isn't. I mean, is it any different than the village you guys were going to destroy before I kind of spoke up? They're at least used in the bodies. A and the souls, too. We don't waste the souls. They are very useful either as armaments or soldiers. You say you wish to defend creation. Oh, one moment, my Martin phone is ringing. <laughs> Sorry, and yet, I to. You, you say you <laughs> wish to defend creation, and yet you are seeking to destroy the very essence of it. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah because we have to stop them from unmaking creation so we can kill creation. Sort of our job. So, so you do not wish to defend creation at all? Well, we uh, have to make sure we're the ones, ones who do it because we have to do it in a specific way to make sure that our job is done so that all of creation falls into the void so that everything will be unmade. Eventually. Not, not now. I mean, that would be like super long in the future. Probably. Timmy? Timmy? Whether it happens today or happens a thousand years from now is no different to us. Yes. What? 
I want Gates of Babylon. <laughs> <laughs> you've, all, you've all but professed that you have no moral superiority to them. I don't care about moral superiority. I kill them. End of story. I kill them. I win. All good. So you're welcome to kill them, so long as you're not killing the people that we defend in the process. And that if is the beat... impasse. If we beat you, we win, so our way is good? Exactly. Unfortunately, as he begins tapping his foot, no one's ever survived by performance. First time for everything. Uh, Give us one, one hour. hour. As he pauses, tapping. Why would I do that? See, you have a giant castle up in the air. That tells me that you probably have a lot of soldiers, but it's not going to be easy to move your soldiers if you don't have that many ships. Therefore, if I give you an hour, that would probably give you enough time to get all of your army down here, positioned, and either evacuate the people here that we need to kill, or to make sure that we can't stop you. At least that's what Dad told me people like me. He told me to think more. And yet, at this point, wouldn't my uh, the other dropships already be coming down? They would be starting to come down, yeah. It still takes time, though. You guys have only been talking for like two minutes, two or three minutes. Fair. The longer you wait, the more bodies you'll have to turn into undead. Or the less we'll have because you'll actually evacuate people out. Hmm. Well, is a soldier's body not more rugged, more durable, more toned? Can Depends on what my be higher? use it for. So, hang on, how about this? How about this? How about you let us slaughter these people? Make our fortification, and we'll help you against the fair folk. You're asking me to sacrifice innocent lives. That's simply not happening. Yeah, sorry, no. I'm trying here. Hang on a second, hang on. As he reaches in, pulls out, like, it looks like a shard of, like, pure black obsidian and just kind of looks into it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, can you come over, please? I'm having a little trouble. No, not that kind of trouble, okay? These would be, these people would be easy. Yes, can you come on, please? Thanks, Ed. Okay, yeah, love you too. Before you putting away. Okay, just give us some time. And we can talk about this, okay? I'm sure my dad can convince you guys. Allow me to put it this way. You asking us to allow the destruction of innocent lives would be like us asking you to cease use of the undead in your military campaigns. You're uh, asking to give up a fundamental piece of ourselves. Oh, I mean, Dad could, it's just he likes making undead. So you do have alternatives. He's good at it. He got training from the mask himself. You know, so kids, while you are taking your time getting this set up, I will be right back. Hey kid, do you like any games? Yeah. yeah. Why don't we go into that house and play games while the rest of us, th them here get to talk about the battle that might happen? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Alright. You've already summoned your master, we'll speak with him. Nevis is going to, as quickly as he can, uh, find the leader of this village. Uh, as you are going, 
in the center there are three older men all laying on the ground their faces locked in a rictus of absolute terror and screaming Uh, I have a few ah, games at my disposal, including chess-like games, and I will distract the kid long enough for them to get villagers out of here while the kid's not looking. As I you see guys it. go into the hut, there is a giant black streak of light, like a brilliant dark raptor flying towards you guys before it lands on the ground I have and seems to unfold on itself. What's up? I had a quip I was trying to slip in there. Oh. The, guy, the, the guy's screaming in sheer existential terror. Like, ah, I see that they saw the season finale of Game of Thrones too. Yeah, I haven't gotten over it either. Nobody has. My territory charms are absolutely useless. <laughs> no, that means since they're dead, you can set it up. Huh? Since they're dead, dead you can set it up. Oh, great. There's oh, no great. leader. I am going to set it up. Uh, let me figure out the exact keywords I want. First off, life. Okay. Okay. I... Let's see. Life, strength... Resolve. Yes, I like that. Okay. okay. I want to make it just absolute full on, you know, infused with life. Let's see, what were the other ones I've got? And forbidding wilderness perils. Wherever the hell that went. There are so many charms! <laughs> you really are. You need that many. Also, guys, uh, I was thinking we can put the charms in the abilities tab and have a nice... And you can actually type in the effects and such. Like, you click the uh, plus button and then you click the little uh, red... I think that's a dragon? And you'll have a box that pops up that you can type everything into. So, very useful for referencing instead of just going to the PDF as I am doing right now. I think I already did that last uh, last time we played because I already have all my abilities in here. How convenient. Thank you, past me. Oh boy. You know... I don't think Forbidding Wilderness Perils is going to be any good here. Because most of this has to do with armies that, you know, kind of need to survive on the land at least a little bit. Zombies don't. Mm-hmm. My territory things are useless. No, they aren't. <laughs> Just think about uh, when someone tries to attack the flying fortress, your territory thing will be much more useful.
I'm hoping that at least the boundary marking meditation will make the undead suffer their penalty because it is infused with life. I'm hoping that's how it will work. Mm hmm. And what do you guys do as you see this giant black raptor coming down for a landing? It's plumage absolutely burning with bale fire. As it slowly folds up into a man clad in black robes with what look like bone vestments stitched onto them around the shoulders, the chest, and what looks like a large skull-like helm. Uh, kid, I'm going to go talk to what I assume is your father. We'll mm -hmm. play games later. Hi, my name's Favian. I heard that you're trying to attack this place. Could you please not? <laughs> Could you not? <laughs> Said the magic word. Oh wait, you forgot to say it would be perfect if you didn't. My character doesn't like Faye, so he <laughs> would not want Domino around. So does anyone else say anything to this guy? Just want to see everyone. I'm keeping my mouth shut for now, for yeah, fear of what weird. I would say. I certainly hope that you're more amenable to alternatives than your... I want to say apprentice is? Young Ward. The simple fact of the matter is, we cannot allow you to harm this village. And we understand that your concept of harm is different than our concept of harm. Just kind of listening as you're speaking before. <clears throat> Shaking his head. No, no. <clears throat> Let's have some discussion here. As he... You literally see him just Lee snap his fingers and dark mist flows out, forming into chairs and a table that he walks over and just kind of sits down at. Could use an ability like that. It would save on storage space. For real. Well, I'm going to join him at this sit-down meeting. Very cautiously, talk cautiously takes a seat as well. Same. Travis is probably still off uh, setting everything up, but uh, he's got Martokio with him. Uh, he would have left Ferris and Win behind. At least I would hope Wynn came down with us. Yes. Did No Name? No Name have... would be with uh, Nevis. I have points in Socialize and such. I know I should sit down, but I refuse and I will stand by one of my seated allies. <laughs> <laughs> What could I offer you to not attack this village? You see, I don't really have anything against these people. I am just under orders that I must do so. And after what I did to the mask before, he doesn't give me much leeway in my orders because I sort of destroyed his pride.
this I, mask, whoever they are. This is a person that is often open to negotiation. No, he's very much likely to kill you. I just had something that he desired, and, well, <laughs> he gives a chuckle. He wanted me for his armies to build him creatures. I was once a great architect, builder of many things, and he wanted to use that for a necromantic army. So he wanted to recruit me as one of his abyssals. I basically forced him into a situation where the only way he would get me was to uh, save my son as well. He did not like that. And since then, I have been under very strict orders that I have to follow. The mere act of including your son in your brokering was enough for him to consider his pride broken? You don't understand how powerful he can be. Yes, for a mere mortal to be able to make him do something, yes, that, that's an affront to his pride. But he needed me, and he still needs me, so he tolerated it. When he knows if anything happens to my son, my entire army will turn on him. Yes, he could probably destroy it, but it would cost him. It would weaken him before the other ones of his peers, and he can't afford that. That's <sighs> amazing. Yet another instance where the moment that somebody has power, ego comes in short, short order behind it. I care not for this town either, but why don't you tell me what you are and aren't allowed to do, and I'll try to find a loophole. A.K.A. roll bureaucracy to see if I could find a way through it. <laughs> As he pulls out a very, very large scroll rigid in blood and lets it roll out across the table. I will read it all and look for a loophole. I'm going to assume that would take more than an hour. You know, from what you can tell... This guy doesn't necessarily want to massacre all of these people. He just doesn't have a choice in the matter. He has to do it. I'm trying to remember, but I believe I have something that allows me to read fast. Well, hold on now. We're in a state of parlay, aren't we? So negotiations are currently active. He can't be held liable if negotiations just happen to take longer than he thought. You get the sense that he would probably try and kill you all. Or unleash the army on the people if things did not go well. That's worth a shot. Just let me know if I get to do anything for reading through the rules he is in it not allowed to do. Roll intelligence plus bureaucracy. Nice. Was my luck enough? Also, uh, just to remind everyone, when we go into battle and such, after you roll, please do put your number of successes in the chat so he does not need to count for everyone. That is appreciated. Okay. You uh, could I do have it six now. here. And in case this matters, I do have uncanny perception technique, which lets me, whenever I'm in range of a spirit or fair folk, within my senses, I experience a strange sensory phenomenon. Half my occult rounded up in successes to an awareness-based attempt to notice such a being. Okay. Um, do you have... Is this one of your favorite abilities at all? Uh, yes. Yes, yes it is. So one of the things you can do is you do have your excellency so that you can use if you wish. You can spend moats up to your, in this case, five, and you can get five extra dice. 
to roll. Well, because you're mentioning it, I feel like I'm going to need it, so sure, I'll spend five motes. Fucking hell, Jim! <laughs> For six more successes, I have twelve. My law work rivals the gods! These are not the villagers you're looking for. <laughs> so, you beat the required 11 successes that I uh, <laughs> rolled for the contract binding. You see, you were based off old maps. This town is no longer going by that name. It is now under this guy's leadership by this name. Uh, so, this is not the town you were looking for. Does the town he was looking for even still exist? No! So, that you means that he was assigned to a null task. He reaches up and pulls off his uh, helmet from his face, and you can see pale white skin, short black hair. He's hot. Oh god, hot as me? He is appearing six. Yes. Six. Doesn't it only go up to five? Yes. yes. Six is... He has appearance six. <laughs> you can get higher than five. It's normally only when using charms or through magical effects. Which makes Typically, me upset. Typically I'm not into human. But him. He is so hot. It's like the pinnacle of hotness has just stepped in front of you. He looks better than me. <clears throat> well, apparently, according to this, this town doesn't exist, actually. Therefore, I am under no obligation to have to murder it. Hmm. This is true, and this was the last town that we had on our list. Yes, yeah, so you will not be attacking the village then, as the village you were meant to attack is not here, and no one from that village is here. What village? List. I don't see a village. List. But Dad, I wanted to kill everyone! Yes, you'll be able to kill everything later, but not here. <laughs> there was a list, and this was at the end of that list? Oh yes, yeah, so we've already slaughtered 35 villages. Well, That's neither here nor there. How much front line is that established? Hmm? How much front line is that established? Um, maybe about half of the east so far. He has, he has others working on other areas right now. But this was last on ours. I don't approve of your methods. In fact, I quite strongly condemn them. But there's there's no undoing what's already been done. All that remains is to make the best of a bad situation, as we share a common foe. He gives a small shrug. We didn't really have much choice in the matter. Or at least, I didn't. Any other task you have to do right now that we could possibly talk you out of? I was planning to go and murder the uh, lesser elemental dragon of uh, that's nearby here. Spare parts. Elemental I wanted dragon. To see what it, mm -hmm. I wanted to see. What, those are basically one of the most powerful gods. Yeah, we need those. Alive, not. Undead. I wanted parts. I wanted to see what I could make with it. And it's not like it really does much. It's more on vacation for the last 800 years and ignoring its job and duty and letting corruption spread. Or so my spies have told me. Uh, quick uh, question regarding lore is don't they maintain creation just by existing? Yes. No. Not the lessers. The lessers. Okay. You're talking. You're thinking of the elemental dragons, the actual ones. They do. There, there are five of them. They sleep in the elemental pools. 
Yeah, no, this is a lesser elemental. You have the lesser elemental dragons, the greater elemental dragons, and then the actual elemental dragons. The lesser dragons basically work as um, people who adjudicate and basically look for corruption in heaven's bureaucracy, and most of them are corrupt and don't do their job anymore. So you feel like targeting it because you feel like it would do more good as spare parts than in its current tasks. It doesn't do its task. It takes bribes and looks the other way, or so my spies have said. I don't see any uh, point of it living when I could probably make better use of it. Well... Honestly, that's a conflict between you and them. Though, I suppose perhaps I might owe you guys something. You did, after all, help me. Well, we helped you not do a thing that we would have hated it if you did. I, in a way, I you've can't. already paid us. Well, uh, I'm the one who helped him, and I did not care what happened to this village, so he could still owe me. We each keep our own accounting. As far as I'm, con as far as I'm concerned, you don't owe me anything. They, however, might see some debt involved. And you can let the Mask of Winters know that I will be coming after him after we take care of this invasion. Wait, why would you use the favor to warn someone? You could find out about his defenses or his security or, like, snipe him. Have you ever heard of the parable of Alucard and the Fear Turkey? That's right. I fucked the fear turkey. <laughs> you know, you could possibly tell us where the dragon is, and maybe we could go and talk to it first, and if I can get it to start doing its job, you won't murder it for spare parts. It's about ten miles to the east. I think one of the uh, Lunars lives nearby it. That is actually a very favorable option. We basically hold it, we hold it hostage against its own life. Do your job or we send you to the zombie army. Who had the bow again? Zusa. Zusa. He's looking over at you with a look of curiosity before ha holding out a hand. Could I see that for a moment? No. <laughs> Wise answer. I was going to offer to help with it. Little does he know I have... Uh, defining intimacy of hate against the Mask of Winters, so I'm just holding. <sighs> As you wish. He's gonna look at uh, uh, Nevis. Is there anything you would wish? Um, I would like to just point out real quick here that I do actually have a minor intimacy against harm to civilians and a defining in the intimacy for people being treated as disposable. So that's why there's no way I would have moved on this. I wasn't sure if I had made it back yet with, from setting up the territory. Yep. Yep. Okay. You come, you back, come back to seeing them all sitting at the table, uh, talking everything or talking things out. I, you're standing. Yes.
What I would wish is for the entirety of creation to be united, but I do not wish it in on death. That said, actually... as this army is already formed, and your contract to this Mask of Winters is complete, perhaps you might lend your strength to us. I do believe that's what they were already intending on doing. He pauses before reaching into his cloak and pulling out a small... He pulls out two things. One is a small piece of black glass that he offers to you to call us if you need help. And the other is an orb. An orb of pure darkness enclosed within 13 rings that are basically... I'm trying to think of... They're basically, like... I'm trying to think of the name for them. Um, shoot. Concentric rings, one smaller than the other, are basically all going down. Uh, I can't remember what the name of it is. Shoot. And from each ring, there are different pins that go down into that black orb. Anyone may make a perception... Or a intelligence plus occult roll for this. All right, I do not know, I don't, well, don't remember how uh, to do dice rolls for this setup. It is all d right click and it... No, I know how to use uh, Fantasy Grounds, I just don't know how the uh, dice rolls They're work all... for Exalted. So it's all d10s. Uh, if you have a rank in the ability, so like in this case it's a cult, then you uh, add... So I've got a That's four... Like so occult plus intelligence yes yep all right uh intelligence is my supernal do i get any bonus for that no that's only for charms all right so so i've your... five intelligence two occults that's seven dice uh if you've got intelligence five plus two occult yeah it would be five or seven I have and a specialty in the undead. Does that give me one? Not for this. Okay. And what's the... Alright. Um, yeah, yeah, tens explode, right? Yes. And counts too. So I have... Yeah, I have three tens. So did I re-roll those three? Yep. Okay, yeah, you, you already know what this is. You know exactly what this is, Adamant. Oh, God, you know what this is. And Zusha, I'm pretty sure um, you're going to uh, Twitch as well. This is a Soul Breaker Orb. What exactly would you be intending for us to do with that? I want to explain what that is for everybody else? That's what, I, that's what I am finding it. Give me just one second. Well, assuming from his reaction that it's something very vile. <gasps> There's a picture of one! Oh, goody! I know you guys know it, but I'm going to roll mine just to see if I would have knew it without being told. Um, where are you posting the image? Uh, Exalted. I'll go bring it up on stream in just a moment. This is a picture of a Soulbreaker orb. Yep. I got a lot of screen here. Oh, yeah! I, I'm, I saw one of those on a spaceship once. I, I, stuck a, I stuck a screwdriver in it and the ship started spinning. Uh, and then there's this loud, there's this loud siren, and then people were yelling. No, you've never seen one of these before. You have only read about them in books. <laughs> I, was, I was joking. I know. I know. <laughs> weapons, of mass, 
Weapons, weapons of mass destruction built in the high first stage by the solar exalted through studies of necrotic essence for the season the deep labyrinth of, uh, of uh, the abyss. These devices... It's a soul nuke. Uh, it's worse than that. They are one-use items. The weapon appears as a foot-wide sphere of soul steel encased in an outer sphere of smoky quartz. Star metal pegs riveted to the crystal hold a dozen concentric orichalcum rings so that they can rotate freely in separate axes of movement. To arm a Soulbreaker orb, the user must touch it and spend 50 motes of essence. This essence can come from others, too. So you can have multiple people power it. Then you need to make a intelligence plus lore roll in order to position all 12 rings into the correct orientation to activate it. You can set it for any sort of time delay that you want from one this second like up a... to a theoretical <laughs> millennia. This sounds like arming a nuke. <laughs> Disarming an arm soul breaker is far more difficult requiring you to cut through the crystal paneling to get to it and then break the key connections for it, which is a wits plus lore roll. Each failure has the remaining time before it detonates, and a botch will trigger it. When the time elapses, the orb levitates and the rings all begin spinning and accelerating as a low keening emits from the soul steel. In a matter of seconds, the artifact shatters and implodes, creating a vortex of golden light and single shadows that stretches out to fill a mile radius. All people have to make an essence roll by every living thing that is there. That does not you immediately use a defense that can block such a thing. So basically a perfect defense, perfect dodge, perfect soak, something like that. Or some way that can allow you to get away from it. Those who fail this roll die instantly. So it's a time nuke that if we want to set off instantly, we can have someone try to disarm it. Those who I'm succeed the roll suffer 20 levels of aggravated damage. Ooh. Soaked with your willpower plus your essence. This damage is entirely spiritual and leaves no mark, being simply writhe in agony as the vortex flays their soul. And it is mathematically impossible for essence one beings to survive. Every plant, animal, and mortal within five miles of the orb dies, and if it kills more than 500 beings, a shadowland will form when the sun next sets. More than five beings? Five hundred sentient 500, beings. Okay. I, I do gotta say, this is the one downside to Exalt it. It's like, you get a stone. Oh, cool, what item is it? Is Hands you a novel. Here you go. You have basically the equivalent of a tactical nuke that will rip open a hole into the underworld if you use it, though. Well, I mean, all nukes have radiation. That's just a given. Now, the question is, what happens if you open that up in the wild? Oof. That is a big question. I don't know, actually, what happens there. Uh, <laughs> pretty much everything dies. That sounds like a perfect shitstorm. Oh, God. You know, everything under my banner in the wild is protected. We could set this up, and then they can't mess with it. <laughs> it's like, so yeah, how would how would you like to have an underworld outpost in the middle of the wild? Well, middle of the wild is such a subjective turn, because the middle could be... Over there, it could be over there, it could be upside down, what inside out, or in anyways. blue. Yeah, what if what is middle? Does middle exist? What if, what are these flimsy concepts? So why exactly are you handing that to us? I'm not even going to bother asking where you found one. Oh, uh, I helped make it. Of course you did. Of course. And as for why you're trusting us with it? Because I want to see what you'll do. 
Right now, locking it away somewhere to never be seen again comes to mind. I mean, this could be a very useful item. Very useful and very dangerous. I'm not directly against potentially using it. I just worry about what would happen if it was taken from us by a third party. What it's actually a pretty it. excellent question. Excellent point, I... rather. Go on, and then I'll say my thing. I would say that's an excellent point. Okay, you are worried someone will take it from us, and no offense to you, kind sir, would you rather have it in the hands of the necromancer who just slaughtered 36 villages, went to slaughter 37, wants to kill a lesser elemental dragon for the heck of it, you, you and was talking about point. killing you've all creatures? You've made your point. <sighs> I'd have to agree with uh, Fabian. I'm not a fan Caleb, of us you... taking possession of it, but the alternative is worse. You got a new power source for your flying airship. Yeah. Um, you... Uh, should I explain to you the difference between energy types? There's well, a difference between fuel grade and weapons grade. It might be different for... Uh, it... And thus can't power your ship, but we could make weapons based on it. Suck the energy from it and shoot undead blast at the fey enemies. You mean bleed the core incrementally? Yes. That could that would be a very useful and safe way to dispose of it. Yeah, yeah, he I, could. I wouldn't know how to engineer it completely on the mechanical side of things, but the occult side of things, I could help out. Perfectly welcome to help out in the middle of a very, very large, very, very empty field. Should we find a stone field? Because then it won't kill the grass around it. Good catch. Does every blade of grass count as a uh, living creature in that? No, it has to be sentient beings. Ah. It that did said, say... It... Sorry. Uh, but that said, every blade of grass does have its own god. Yes. And it mentioned it killed all plant life within a certain radius. Mm-hmm. We would need to find a stony field or a desert for I... no. attempting to deconstruct it. Even then, there's stuff living in the ground, and there's technically gods of air. We would need to just be in the air and ask the local wind god to just fuck off for a few hours. It would be more useful for the wild. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not directly against just launching this thing into the wild on a timer do some damage against the fair folk, but I feel like this new option of potentially using it as a fuel source does bring with it interesting options. Having this be the power core for some type of directed weapon, then we could pick and choose what we use it on. We could get far more efficiency that way. <laughs> Regardless, and now, our and now the cut. <laughs> go on, Fabio. Our go on who? Fabio is not his name. He is Nevis. I, I am Nevis, Nevis, King of Nevis. Conquerors. <laughs> I like what you did. <laughs> He goes, he goes on a 30 game. minute Do <laughs> not forget my name, for it is the one that all shall recognize as their true and rightful ruler. I will conquer 
all of creation. I am Nevis, king of He's conquerors. I, I I'm sorry. I imagine like you're this for quite some time. I, I imagine his butler guy just comes in the middle of it, and it's like, yes, yes, everyone knows you're Nevis. Here's your tea. Sit down, relax, king of all, and he just calms him down like a child. An interesting concept has occurred to me. We could find a way to siphon power from the core and direct it as a weapon. We could potentially arm the fortress with that, and then we would have a defensive weapon that can be used against any singular large foes. Sort of like a death beam or a... Yes. Death star or something like that? A large caliber artillery weapon. Something that... Even the fair folk would take pause at. Sounds like fun. And it would be a strong deterrent against them sending anything that's particularly expensive on their behalf towards us, as they wouldn't want to risk losing it. I don't know if fair folk have a concept of expensive. No, not a concept of expensive, but they have a concept of tactical worth. Yes and no? That's my proposal anyways. Well, we can discuss more of this when we get back on the... <laughs> back on the sky sh base... And uh, yes, Sirokin, we were discussing this in front of the necromancer. That's why I told him no offense when I mentioned him murdering people. And yeah, this is actually deliberately that this is taking place in front of him because he said his motive is he wants to see what we would do with it. So I'm rewarding that curiosity and I'm showing him there are alternatives to just blowing shit up. We could also just use it on his boss. And that you choose to say in front of him? Yes. I wasn't going to say that out loud. Okay, so quick question. Yes. Yes. Is he actually free from his contract as a whole? For this, For this job. If it yeah, they but only does found he already, a loophole. Does he have another uh, contract or something? He's bound, He's to, bound serve to serve the Mask of Winners so long as the Master of Winners exists. Okay. He's an exalted. Side quest uh, acquired. Got it. Save the Necromancer. Nevis more <laughs> wants to save the little boy who is clearly insane at this point. Yeah, he's just a product of his environment. I blame the schools. <laughs> I mean, I guess undead schools would be really bad. The teachers is just like, uh, uh, uh. Yeah, it's culinary class. The first thing they learn how to make is soylent. <laughs> so you guys are going to be hanging off to do the dragon then? I vote for talking to the dragon. Yeah, that sounds like fun. Yeah, let's go blackmail the dragon. What could go wrong? Uh, Nevis, before we leave, will relay the location of the fortress that, they, that we were going to uh, reclaim. Okay. Uh, and tell him that that's where we're headed and if you're actually trying to help against this army go there sounds good to the necromancer <laughs> a quick aside when it comes to things like this remember that framing is everything make sure the dragon knows that if not for our intervention he would have just been assassinated in the night and there would have been nothing he could do about it we're trying to help then I think we will call the session here then, because I need to now make up stats for this dragon. <laughs> and the death ray.
We might might just end up talking to the dragon, though. That's what it seems like you guys like doing. Yeah. <laughs> I'm hey, sexy hey, and I, I use it. I, I like yeah. the concept of a death ray right now, okay? Every every evil lair, uh, excuse me, holy lair, needs a death ray. I built this character primarily planning combat. And yet so far, yes, we have wound up all of our battles being resolved with talking. <laughs> and I don't know the concept of my character anymore. Because Nevis has begun just giving in, just begun actually just embracing him. the talking. Well, you well we did have on one. Just picturing him on the end of one of the sky piers, staring at his gauntlets. They look like you, big, strong hands, don't they? You pulled a bro scander. You started the game saying you're going to fight and conquer everything, and now you're just being a bro. <laughs> you know, you are very much right. We still did have that one combat. The combat that I, uh... <laughs> I was like, hey, stop fighting, and the fake creatures were like, okay, and got demolished. <laughs> mm -hmm. Just 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 give me my orbital death ray. Eye on strike. Eye on strike. Oh, wait a minute. I just that, that thing is like soul ripping energy, right? So it's like dark energy kind of stuff, evil stuff. It the body's still there, but the soul is destroyed. I I just I just just it's just, you know, it's an eldritch, one could say. And it's creating a blast. So one could say that we're giving the fortress an eldritch blast. <laughs> Timmy, you may kill her. <laughs> you can't kill me because I got the blast. I do find it funny, though, that uh, two out of three, no, three out of four of the combats, I was ready for combat as the uh, character with high charisma based on talking to people. And the one time everyone else was like, let's combat, I was like, nah, I should do my job for once. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing about the sense, except for the blast. <laughs> Sexy boy reads papers to save day. <laughs> Day was saved, and that's the important part. Well, all right, everybody. Thank you all so much for joining us this, uh, today. <laughs> I'm used to saying this evening, but you know, it's still day <laughs> for Tides of Madness Exalted. You know, I even had the combat music going and everything. I wound up not being used. See, I was actually really planning, planning if you guys wanted to fight the three armies of uh, tier fives. I had everything figured out for it, but it's like, hey, I'll give you guys a chance to see if you guys can talk it out. And lo and behold, Shim got the 12 successes needed in order to actually do it. Well, of course Chim did. Chim is luck incarnate. Hey, so anyway. you're telling me how I need to bring gals here. Got it. Anyways, everyone, thank you for joining us for Tides of Madness Exalted. Uh, I will be back in a few minutes with a uh, another stream. Uh, I'm thinking probably Subnautica uh, until we are ready for uh Red Flag Rejects Dungeons and Dragons this evening. Uh, do check out our website in the meantime, zgfgaming.com. We got links for our Discord, Telegram, Twitter, Patreon, all those things there on the website as well as down in the description below. Please consider becoming a patron over at patreon.com slash zgfgaming. Uh, you can support the channel and make sure these streams keep coming. Thank you to my patrons, donators, and subscribers. It is because of all of you that I'm able to continue bringing these streams to you all. 
But for now, thank you so much for joining, and I bid you the most fondest adieu. I'll be Eldritch right blast! Back. <laughs> bye bye! <laughs> Bye, everyone. Have a lovely time, and don't worry, next session I shall be even sexier. Bye, okay, everyone. Be oh my nice. god, he must be stopped. <sighs> a good one, folks. You cannot stop me. I will gain the perfect form and body. Perfect, you say? Okay. More perfect than Don. Let say perfect! <laughs> now you show up! Darling, it's okay. It's okay. I'm going to be perfectly late. <laughs> you are just late! There is nothing perfect about it! Darling, everything I do is perfect. It was fashionably late, put a perfect I'm jealous. Dent in your head. That was an appearance 7 fashionably late. <laughs> At least appearance 9. I will need your help to reach your standards then. As you now look like him. Oh. <laughs> it's the I longest outro ever. Oh, we've had longer. Anyways, guys, I'll be right back.